What's up, everybody? We have a new guest today. This will be my first professor on the podcast here and hopefully a long stream of professors that I have on. Um, I'm going to introduce him and then we'll get right into it. So my guest today is a Wall Street Journal and USA, USA Today bestseller, author of over a dozen books. He is a CEO of Igniting Souls, Blockchain Life, and the current buried chair of entrepreneurship at Cedarville University. He's an award-winning novelist, screenwriter, and inventor, and he's been featured in Entrepreneur, CBS, Fox News, Yahoo, and many other major media outlets. I want to welcome you today, Carrie Overrunner. Good to see you. Thank ya. you for coming Go on. on. Yeah. All right. I kind of stole that a little bit from your website, hey, but I thought great. that was a good intro. That's great. Um, but how are you feeling today? Feeling awesome. Chapel was really good. Dr. Yeah. White uh, delivered gold. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, I always enjoy his um, approach to sermons. Yeah. Um, like I, I like um, some people where they're just flowing into it. Yeah. But his is a very structured sermon. Right. Like, oh, here's the outline. Here's this. Yeah. Um, I appreciate both. It's but awesome. it's always nice. So I kind of want to dive in first to how I met you. Mm. Um, the first time I came to know you was one, I was like, oh, there's a new professor in town. It's like, what is he about? Yeah. But um, as a freshman, we have to meet with the head of our department apartment, our major, yeah. so Dr. Austin, and you gave a little mini speech That's right. there. Um, that was the first time I actually met you. Um, and then you invited us to, it was like an entrepreneurship meeting. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad you came. So it was yeah. Startup Society originally, right. and now Q. Yeah. Um, so I went to that. Um, I kind of just fell in love with the idea of the Sweet. org right away. Yeah. And uh, so what was your path to like Q? and starting that work and yeah. how did that just end up happening? So basically when I came on at Cedarville and you know, I don't know if you want that whole story or do we just jump right in with Q? Yeah. Whatever you want, okay. we can jump into that. So yeah. quick, quick story, uh, I'll try to go fast, but basically uh, I'll start with college. Went to Grace College mm -hmm. and Grace College was um, awesome. I liked it and what was pretty interesting about that was I wanted to be an Air Force chaplain. So mm -hmm. I thought, hey, I'm going to I'm going to do that. And unfortunately, um, childhood asthma kept me out. And so I tried to do like medical waivers and all that. But it was very clear that God sh was shutting all the doors. So I just want to encourage any student here, like you may think you're on a path. And then if God absolutely closes it, in fact, the way he closed it was um, I was sitting with a recruiter, kind of like at a, at a desk like this, and the recruiter said, all right, let's just go through the health uh, outline. Do you have HIV? No. Do you have cancer? No. Do you have asthma? And I'm, and I'm like, well, I have. And then she got up and shut the door mm -hmm. and said, don't ever say that again. And I was like, what, what are you talking about? And she said, if you say you have asthma, you will, you will never be in the military. And I and then she handed me a pen and said, check the no box. So I say that because my whole future literally hung on a no box. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because you could, and then she tried to go psychology on me and be like, well, how do you know you have it? Well, who told you you had it? Well, you know, and at the end of the day, I was, I, I, I basically said, I cannot check this box. I, I have to admit it. And then then she said well you're never going to get in so then i went out in the car and i actually you know just to be real straight up with people like i was very angry and i just like cuss got out yeah. because i thought here i am doing all this for you i'm trying to be you know the best christian i can and you're slamming the door and breaking my dreams again like yeah. that's kind of the theme of my life is like god kind of gave me a dream and broke the dream but little did I know, now looking back, he's actually shaping the dream. Mm -hmm. So for any student here today, I really feel like if you give your life to God, not just for salvation, but also for sanctification right now, he will guide you, but it will not always feel good. Yeah. You know? So long story short, then I, I, I basically um, decide to become a pastor okay. and go to a small country church. Um, small country church was fine. And uh, then a larger church invited me to Columbus, Ohio, did the pastor thing there as a youth pastor for a couple of years, and then thought, you know what, I, I, need, I want more. Like, nothing wrong with the pastor thing, but I just, 
I'm, you know, now looking back, I'm an entrepreneur and entrepreneurs kind of are restless mm -hmm. and they kind of like keep having to create. So basically uh, what happened then was I applied at Cedarville okay. in 2005 and Cedarville then, uh, I think you know the story, they rejected me. Mm -hmm. So they said, we, we don't uh, think that you're the best candidate for the, for the Bible prof. So then I kind of asked the Lord again, you know, closed dream, closed door. Well, what's next? And that's where I, then I became an entrepreneur and didn't really think about Cedarville much until two Christmases ago, I was at a, um, a party and there were some Cedarville profs there and they asked what I did. I said entrepreneurship and they said, we've been looking for an entrepreneur professor for several years, would you apply? And I said, I really can't give up my businesses because I like it too much. And they yeah. said, we don't want you to. The professors or the kids need you mm -hmm. to be a authentic, like yeah. a real, a real, prof, you know, like a real entrepreneur. So taught adjunct a year ago and said, okay, God, if I like this and if they like me, then I'm going to stay and give it a shot, throw my name in the hat for the, the chair of entrepreneurship. And that first semester a year ago, when I taught that class, it was seven to 10 PM. So okay. ima imagine that seven to 10 PM. Was it here on campus? Here on campus. Okay. And we were wow. talking like NFTs, metaverse, cryptocurrency. Luke was in that, Madeline, okay. Summer. I mean, there's, I'll never forget those people. They're an amazing group. Anyway, I brought in VR goggles. I mean, we were like blowing it up, like mm. all kinds of crazy stuff. And then, but imagine that, like leaving an hour and 10 minutes to drive here, leaving at 10 p.m. Yeah. and getting back almost at midnight. You know what I'm yeah. So after the first day, though, I did it and I said, yes, I love this. I mm -hmm. thought, oh, my gosh, these students are awesome. They're on fire. And I started seriously praying like, OK, God, this will massively shift my life if I become a full time professor in addition to um, having, you know, business having two yeah. businesses. Yeah. But God just kept opening doors and they kept being open to mm. it. Yeah. So I think last last spring then went through all the hoops and it's tough to be a professor here. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I have a son who's 18, who's going to be um, a freshman now this year. And this was even before, like he chose Cedarville. I think I told you, he chose Cedarville before I even had this You're involved job. In here, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. It was last, it was two Octobers ago where he's like, he took a tour and he's like, I think I'm going to go here. Yeah. And my wife went here. And so I was like, cool. And then that opening came up in December, two months later. So that shows like how God isn't opposed to us. He's shaping us. And then when his timing is right, he'll let it it's, happen. It's good. Yeah. But how many times in scripture do we see people who um, force the timing? Abraham, right? Uh, with Hagar instead of Sarah, you know, like just people rushing. Saul rushed the sacrifice in, you know, out outflanked Samuel. Mm -hmm. So I just want to encourage, like I drop all these little nuggets for your, for your audience, but like you have to put God first, but you have to wait. Yeah. All right. So basically then everything's cool. They, they offer me their job. Um, Dr. White, I remember in his office before I got the job, he said, why should we have on, why should we have entrepreneurs? Like, I think he was playing hardball. Yeah. He said, why should we have entrepreneurs? I thought entrepreneurs drop out of college. You know, like, I think he was <laughs> yeah. just, yeah. And, and I said, I don't think entrepreneurship is a minor. I think it's a mindset. And that's like where that the phrase whole tagline came. For yeah, Q, yeah, yeah. yeah. On the shirts. That, that's where that came from because I really, you see it. I mean, you see music people like Soraya, who just did an interview with me. She's in music and she wants to be entrepreneurial. You see yeah. Eve with the cookie, you see Willem yeah, with, the music um, box. with the music box, you see Cooper who is environmental sciences. Like you see how everyone today honestly needs to think like an entrepreneur. Yeah. That's one thing I actually realized with this pitch is uh, with Lainey and oh, yeah. winning as a computer science major. And I've talked to some other computer science yeah. kids that I know. I feel like they have such potential to be entrepreneurs because yes. they have the skill set to build these things. Yes. 
if they could just pair it with business. Yes. Like I was like, I talked to this one kid, like he probably wouldn't like to speak. It's definitely mm. not his thing. He's great at the computer science stuff he does. Right. I was like, what if we paired them with a communications kid That's and they like huge. split like the winnings. It's like, yeah. they can help with the presentation. Yes. And the computer science kid knows how to. It's very good. Idea. And that's a good team right yeah. there. So prior to me taking this role, though, I did bring down um, Sarah. I think you've met Sarah. She's she's the president yeah. of my company. So I'm the visionary. She's what's called the integrator. We run on something called EOS. It stands for Entrepreneur Operating System. Mm -hmm. It basically says that, like, look, the whole business doesn't depend on one person. It's yeah. a... It's a visionary and an integrator. And together that match helps yes. entrepreneurial companies. So I brought Sarah down here and I'm like, look, if I say yes to Cedarville, it's going to be more on you for the business. Are you okay with that? And so like we talked, we prayed. Um, my wife, Kelly, I asked her like, what do you think? You know, it's going to be me driving here, you know, a bunch of days a week. And what do you think? And so it was like literally God's perfect timing because yeah. I have a senior son, junior daughter, and then an eighth grade daughter. And like the fact that these kids got cars that can now drive so that when I'm at Cedarville, like, it, you know, it just worked out perfect. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, you come, um, now you're here at Cedarville. I'm here at Cedarville. Yeah. They got this uh, got startup society yeah. name, nothing wrong with it. But I even said like startup society, again, like, my first, uh, I talk about leadership being credibility. Yeah. And you sometimes you have to spend credibility chips. Like it's an imaginary, but like, let's say every relationship, I think you've read my book, Show Up, Filled Up, mm -hmm. or you know about it, but like every relationship, you start with zero credibility chips. Yeah. Maybe even a deficit. Like they might look at me and be like, that dude's bald, that dude's 47. That dude's, you know, whatever. So I might actually start below credibility with certain people. So here's some examples of practical things I did. I don't know if you remember this, but I created a video. Do you remember this? For every student, unless you came I in. I remember that remember this? for the uh, digital marketing class, digital, you made yeah. a Loom video for all of us. Literally yeah. every class that I had last semester, I, I, I went out on my porch mm -hmm. and I created a hundred videos. And I sent it to every one per student based on the survey they gave me. So I gave a survey that said, like, what do you like? What, do you, what are you nervous about? What, what do you, what's your passion? Like, is it a sport? And then they would, they, would, they would tell me this. And then when I recorded the video, I literally had the answers open. And I said, hey, Connor, great to see you. Thanks for filling out the survey. I see it. It's right in front of me. It sounds like you like professors who are real. Sounds like you live here. Awesome. Hey, I'm coming to Cedarville. And what I, why, like the whole reason why I did that, because it took like a ton of time. Yeah. But the whole reason why I did that is because I knew I, if I can scale trust fast at Cedarville mm -hmm. and not be like the popular professor, but be like a professor who people say, that dude cares, mm -hmm. that dude is interested in me, I knew I could lead faster. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, first day at Startup Society, I'm like, oh, we got to change the name. Yeah. And I didn't want to just change the name just to change it, but I literally, what got me thinking of it is a, is a professor came up to me after I presented to all the faculty. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, and I don't know if you know the story, but, but Startup Society, their logo was SS. Yeah. And if you Google SS, it's like the German Nazi, like, and they, no one wanted that as the initials, of course. Yeah. But they didn't, weren't even thinking that way. Mm -hmm. But I thought, you know, if we have a startup society that creates brand confusion, mm -hmm. even with the older faculty. Yeah. Because then the younger, fa you know, younger students might not even be put the two and two together. Yeah. But I'm like, we're gonna, we're gonna sideways energy. Yeah. And then the other thing is, remember I told you all. We don't want to just appeal to startups. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Like startup society makes it sound like you got to just start this, a business. And yeah, go through you got to be like this Elon Musk person. Yeah. And I felt like Q, and then we studied like Q. Like what is Q? Q is a signal to act. Yeah, it's a call to action. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, if you say, "Hey, in theater, like, what's my cue?" 
you're literally asking like what precedes you acting yeah and so i thought wow what if we could call this q yeah cue cedarville university entrepreneur and i'm so glad that your students all of you were receptive yeah because you could have been like ah this dude's you know forget him but you took that and you said awesome and then we made a logo yeah and then i learned quickly that marketing and communication um, department at Cedarville is awesome, but they had preferences yeah. and actually good preferences. I got to give them a shout out. They actually gave helpful feedback because like the logo that I just threw together, sometimes as an entrepreneur, you actually throw things together too fast. Yeah. Yeah. Minimum viable product. So we were going to make signs. Remember that we pitch. Yeah, we were about pitch ready to spend a few that. hundred dollars. Yeah on this amazing banner and so we had to get the logo right yeah but we started meeting you remember that we started meeting like i don't know like once a month at least maybe even more than that you started meeting weekly yeah yeah it was the main team with you was like once a month but then our team we met every monday yeah and then i was kind of assistant slash help helper to yes. annie and then mariah i helped yes. her with a lot of the pitch stuff um more of just following her around and lifting stuff as she yeah needed. and so I was very, like really involved right away. And we, I don't know, I've, I've never seen a pitch like live before prior to coming, but you all crushed it. Like yeah. we immediately stepped it up, not in a bad way that they were doing it before, but like we got a red carpet, we yeah. got a step and repeat banner, we had a pre show. Pre show, yeah. Marcom, thanks to them, they gave us permission to control the social media, which is pretty rare like yeah that think was about huge it. being able to stream to all of their yeah platforms like they're risking their brand they're like okay i guess cedarville yeah. has this reputation of all these years i mean that's a big thing to like risk a brand on hey we got an idea yeah. and then then we started um the e-mind podcast yeah so then we immediately got like students i started interviewing students i started interviewing faculty like I just knew that I had to come guns blazing to serve. Mm -hmm. Maybe guns blazing is the wrong term, but you, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, just like the ground with your feet running. Yeah, all yeah. Day. Like yeah. We, we couldn't sit around and be like, what are we doing? And then I even, um, we had that hackathon. Yeah. Remember that? We invited um, any student who wanted to go over to the International Center for Creativity and do a whole weekend. That's yeah. where Aubrey and Allie and Libby and Claire and Claire and all yeah. those people started like I think you can see it their learning curve went from like here to way yeah over they did really fast. well there and they've yeah, been very influential yeah. yeah so that was cool um, I know uh, a lot of our team didn't end up going to the hackathon but yeah. I know there's a major interest this year especially yeah. from testimony from those the girls that went Yep. Um, they really enjoyed it. They thought it was beneficial. And now, I don't know, We this is new, um, Q Camp. Yeah, Q Camp in the so summer. So Q Camp is June 4th through the 7th. Mm -hmm. It's for high schoolers. And so, yeah, my whole role here, I think with Dr. Heyman, I just got to give him a big um, shout out because yeah. he could have been like, look, and even Cedarville, you know, who knows how long I'll stay. I, I, I'm happy to stay, you know, a while if, they, if they'll have me. But... If you're going to bring in an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and not a theorist, they're going to rock the boat. They're going to create and yeah. innovate. And sometimes in higher academics, that's not cool. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. I mean, it's different to an extent. Yeah. Um, neither like bad, good or bad. It's just a yeah, different, like different mindset. It's a system. And higher academics, just like government and just like a lot of church, it's kind of known like tradition and rules and guidelines and layers and let's be honest, politics. Yeah. And so thankfully, Cedarville has been amazing. Yeah. Like, and I, I seriously mean that. Like everyone I've met, I mean, from the Cove mm -hmm. to the math department, um, Professor Ornsby, yeah. uh, a yeah. math person, um, Dr. Lou, the new music guy, brought me into his class and mm. said, speak to our class. There's professors reaching out all over being like um, the communication and broadcasting people. They, yeah. they invited me to come in. So it's the reason why we're having success in entrepreneurship at Cedarville is literally because 
the people are receptive. Yeah, the, the professors are receptive. The, the professors, students are receptive. students. So I think yeah. in general, in all academics, entrepreneurship is just blooming. I know my cousin. He's yeah, at, really. He's at one of Penn State's branch campuses. Wow. And he's in an entrepreneurship program. There's a gas station called Sheets. Yeah, oh yeah, I know um, about Sheets. And they're yeah, based yeah. out of Altoona, which is his branch campus. It's about 40 minutes from my house. Sheets is. And yeah, wow. so it was started by the Sheets Bros and yeah. all that coffee shop now big convenience wow. gas station. Okay. Um, amazing company. We have a lot in Columbus. Yeah, yeah. They, they've been moving out this way. They have one like 15 minutes from here, which is wow. nice. Wow. But uh, they have a great company and they're really investing in entrepreneurship. They have like an entrepreneurship building and it's like Department of Sheets Entrepreneurship or what? something. What? So, right, I'm going to check that out. So they, they're really yeah. trying to promote that. Mm. My cousin's been able to meet with the CEO. Really? Which is awesome. Like he's in classes with him. That's cool. So I think in general entrepreneurship is just growing it yeah. is it is yeah. like you look at the magazines today yeah i'm told that the generations before the people who were on the magazines were like rock stars yeah and movie stars the people today honestly who are like the influencers are the are the entrepreneurs yes yeah, the entrepreneurs i mean you know I what i'm saying kind of wanted to get into this and i had a study that i looked at it surveyed a thousand gen zers like okay. my age 18 to 25 wow and it said that 84% of them selected entrepreneurship as the most exciting of like 12 career paths. Wow. And 75% of them ultimately, ultimately want to become entrepreneurs. That was like Yahoo Finance. That's interesting. You got to send me that. So, yeah. Yahoo That's Finance has ammo. a lot That's that good talks ammo. about it. Yeah. So I think, and we talked about this in class a little bit, but it's like Gen Z, if you define Gen Z business wise, yeah. it's the entrepreneurial generation. Interesting. Um, a lot of people you, are attributing Gen Z to that. So yeah. I think it's interesting. Well, even like my okay. son has already started a drop shipping company, a yeah. chain company, you know, a, a drink mixer company. Like, I'm not saying these things blew up and yeah. that they're like crushing it, but I see your generation taking shots. Yeah. You know, like my generation might have been like, oh, we need a building and we need you know, inventory, your generation is like, look, I can connect Shopify with this supplier and we can list it on this website and yep. this person can build an app. Like it's this digital Create, creating systems and connecting. Yeah. I think that's like, that's all it's needed is you have a system and if you can connect people, that's right. It's like, that's all you need really. It's so, so cool. It's, it's cool. opening the door for sure. Yeah. So there's a lot of options. I know, uh, I think Gary V talked about it a little bit. It's like, Gen Zers, some people like to claim them as lazy. It's like, mm. oh, they don't want to do this job or a trade. Which trades are like, trades in the future are going to be interesting. Yeah, because so many, so little people are doing AI, that. robotics, who knows all that. Yeah. But it's just that Gen Z has so many options. Yeah, like we know that we can go and try to do stuff on TikTok, or we yeah. can go and do drop shipping. Right, and we don't have to go and be a plumber. Um, but I think I also swing around to make like the plumbers and the trades people are going to make bank. Because there's mm. only going to be a few of them. Yeah. Because like, the one guy will probably have to serve a lot of people. Yeah. So the supply and demand. Will Unless swing. the plumber dude now has like a robot workforce. Yeah, something like <laughs> right. that. They could automate it. Yeah. Whoever can automate the trades, I think, is That's what, right. who will kill it. Yeah. For sure. So, it's cool. So yeah, you talked a little bit about um, just your timeline in college um, mm. into business. Um, you transitioned from pastor to yeah. entrepreneurship. What was the first step and like the first? thing you ventured into yeah. once you switched over from uh, totally being a pastor into business so my first book i started writing in 2003 okay so 2003 here i am two years at two three years into being a pastor and i'm like well you know what i i want to write books mm -hmm. so i started writing books and yeah now looking back I, I think oh my gosh was i an entrepreneur but at the time I didn't know it. And that's why I almost felt, honestly felt like, yeah, am I a bad pastor? Yeah. Because, you know, I looked around at my other pastor friends and and, and they thought, man, this is awesome. And I, it's not like I didn't like being a pastor. I actually liked several elements. Mm -hmm. um, I liked meeting with uh, people. Yeah. I liked teaching and preaching. What killed me was the internal meetings that we had mm. where especially Tuesdays were like, I'm not even kidding, four to six to eight hours of meetings as a team. 
And that's not even bad. What's bad though is we didn't make clear decisions mm -hmm. and we didn't take action. Like we'd meet, what are we gonna do? Well, I don't know, I think this, I think that. And now looking back, I realize like, wow, man, entrepreneurs have a bias toward action. Mm -hmm. So I literally don't have a lot of tolerance today for wasting time, Yeah, you know? And so I started in 03, little confidence. And I share this because I struggled with depression. I struggled with even self-injury. I've, I've told you that. It was a secret. Nobody knew about it. But it was this low self-esteem. It was these high expectations and mm -hmm. the inability to meet them. And then self-hatred as a result. So you can imagine, like, here I am trying to be an entrepreneur, but I'm thinking I've never been to business school. You know, will people buy from me? What do I offer? Mm -hmm. This type of thing. So it was this, it was this eight years of thinking side hustle, could it ever go pro? And then I connected with a guy named John Maxwell. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Um, he's got he's written like 21 irrefutable laws of leadership okay, yeah, and yeah. developing the leader within. He's he's really like the guy to write leadership books. Anyway, he was a pastor, met up with him and thought, oh my gosh, this guy has so much more influence and impact and income. But I've never been, I've never been like money wired. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds weird, but like I grew up with parents who were both in full-time ministry. Mm -hmm. And you almost kind of got this like negative view of money. Like you shouldn't charge for anything. So I had to work through all those issues because mm -hmm. In the beginning, when you're an entrepreneur, like there's a lot of self-limiting beliefs. Who would buy from me? Should I charge? What should I charge? And you know, I've kind of taught around that, like the law of compensation. I've taught some things that way. But I would just encourage people that um, eight years of a side gig. So finally, it came to this point where the church kind of felt that he's writing book one, two, three, four, five. He's speaking. He's coaching. So I, I felt I feel like looking back, something had to give. Mm -hmm. You know, was I either going to be in the church or was I going to be outside the church? And so they basically said to me, "Look, I think they felt like I was going to leave soon." And so they said, "We want to declare you as senior pastor, the next guy, but you won't assume it for ten more years because the senior pastor has ten more years left." Mm -hmm. And so they said, "We want you to pray about it." So I prayed about it, and I honestly felt like the answer was no. And so then that was like the die was cast. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. And then and then I had to say, okay, well, if I'm not going to be senior pastor, then what am I going to do? And that's where um, it was one crystallized conversation where I got called out by my coach and um, – he basically just said, I think you're scared. And he said these words, you can't take the ring and stay in the Shire. I don't know if you're, okay, are, yeah. are you a Lord of the Rings Yeah, Lord fan? of the Rings, Hobbit, yeah, okay. Yeah, so he's like, you cannot take the ring and stay in the Shire. And the yeah. Shire meant like the church. It mm -hmm. meant like what was safe, what was comfortable. It could, the Shire could be anybody for any anything for people who are listening. The yeah. Shire could be their day job. The Shire could be their family's approval. The Shire could be their boyfriend or girlfriend's wishes for their life. But like, it's really faith. Yeah. Joseph had to leave the Shire. Noah had to leave the Shire. Esther had to leave the Shire. Like, yeah. it, that's why I think the Lord of the Rings resonates. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, C.S. Lewis and Tolkien, they, yeah. they did have Christian influence. And even though I remember in their conversations at the, uh, the, the inkling eagle. with their group yeah, and, the, and their group. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that um, C.S. Lewis for a while always said, oh, there's no Christian elements in my book or whatever. Yeah. And Tolkien is like, yes, there is. And yes. Tolkien didn't even intentionally do it in The Lord of the Rings. He just let, like, he had faith in God and it just yes. came through, like the Shire and exactly um, sacrificing and all that. So yes. it just shows up in the art. A yes. little bit like in our Images and Idols book. Yes. Talking about, like, if you're really invested in your faith, and you're following what God's teaching, right? It will just come through you. That's true. And you don't even have to like think about it. it; just 
forms through whatever your heart is set on. Absolutely. So, I love it. Wow. I love That's it. I've enjoyed that book. And also too, like in that class, creative problem solving, um, the book, I really enjoyed that. I like, I like reading. I'm yeah. trying to do one beyond all the reading for college, so okay. like one productivity book a month. Nice. Um, but um, I was talking to some kids about the flow. Yes. And the stuff you've been talking about. And they love it. They do. They love like, it. Like really like some kids in some classes, like they'll talk about like, oh, I don't really like this class. Yeah. I think this is annoying. I don't know if I've ever seen kids so invested in something. Wow. That's just like different like that. Like wow. you're teaching. I'm teaching. Like life skill. Yeah. I'm teaching. Um, for those who don't know, it's um, the optimal state of human performance, which is flow. Mm -hmm. And you know, some people might be like, "Oh, it's woo woo, it's hype, it's pop psychology." Actually, you know, like when we've been getting into like me, me high chick sent me high, yeah. um, Herb Benson, Harvard MD, hmm. Stephen Kotler. Like, there's some deep neurobiology that goes into flow, yeah. and so <clears throat> I'm announcing it here. But I'm gonna try to get. Um, they were good. Are we good? Keep going. Yeah, we okay. have that camera. We're I'm gonna good. try to get approval to like weave in that book yeah um, i think that'd be big in some of the creative problem solving like yeah. officially because right now i'm just talking about you're just I'm talking about it, about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah i know if kids knew <coughs> knew the specific book i'm sure they would dive into yeah. it yeah and at least for like speechify or something i know a lot of kids don't like to read as much right now yeah it's not as popular but that's what my book unhackable yeah. really is it's to say look <clears throat> we as a society are not in flow. And mm -hmm. that's why people honestly are, are um, self-medicating in different ways. Yeah, Because the bot, God created our bodies so that when we get into flow, certain uh, neurochemicals are released. And because we're not tapping into that a lot, society has actually other drugs, legit, that yeah. mimic a, 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 a lower form of flow. Mm -hmm. And people pick that because it's the quick fix yeah but to get into flow you know the first phase is struggle mm -hmm. and so a lot of young people or old people don't want struggle and yeah. so we actually rob ourselves from getting into flow yeah yeah i think it's especially um i've been using a lot of time blocking oh yeah i've always been interested in time management i did a speech about it in the fall interesting um using like the einstein matrix yes. system where it's like you got four boxes there's important non-important yes. urgent and then not urgent and um i i use that i've been using that for years wow with uh, franklin covey yeah and franklin covey uses that sure um and i've now started implementing time blocking with that system so that's um, cool so I'll you're have, getting these flow sessions yeah in these flow sessions where it's just like i have an hour i have to finish this thing in this hour um, I, your idea about going to a coffee shop with no charger I was yeah. like, that's pretty cool yeah. um because then you're like oh my gosh like, you actually perfect. have to yeah. or else it'll die yeah. so i try to set like these it's like one hour write this paper and do it and it, it's, it's clicked it sometimes yeah. i had a, a paper i had to do for this week and it was like um i gave myself an hour and yeah. finished the rough draft and then we're also talking about looping um music yeah and the music could have the same exact song, uh, maybe without lyrics. Remember um, yeah. in class we did um, Sleeping At Last song. Um, you know, what did you think that, of that the yeah. other day? That was good. That uh, yeah. definitely worked for me. Sweet. I know it worked for some other kids, and a lot of them have been going to, like, YouTube has, like, these two-hour long videos. Okay. That have, yeah. like, focus or yeah. flow type music. Exactly. As long as they, they you, you don't have the commercial. Yes. Because yeah. I was telling people, you know, the YouTube commercial will totally mess your flow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. I know. Even notifications. Some of the channels that do it, they specifically don't do uh, commercials within. Wow. Because if there's a commercial in a long video, it's set by the creator. Interesting. Like you can flip a switch of saying, how many ads do you want played during wow. the video? Okay. And uh, so a lot of them actually turn it off. Cause nice. Like, We're trying yeah. to do flow. Yeah. And so that would affect it. So they just take wow. a little bit less monetization. That's cool. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. So I want to dive into a little bit of just the here and now teaching. Mm -hmm. You've already done your first like full semester, then yeah. your adjunct um, into your second semester here. What uh, what's your experience been like? What yeah. have are some key things that definitely, you've noticed? Definitely. So I think God is doing some some amazing things at Cedarville. Um, we just had our business comm preview day mm -hmm. and. To my knowledge, that's the first time there's ever been one. I mean, certainly since I've been here, but 
I think the reason why I wanted to have it is because I'm so pumped about what God's doing at Cedarville. In fact, yeah. the branding of Cedarville is so unique because they are unapologetically biblical. Yeah. And they'll they'll actually create brand loyalty and brand hatred from from like the very beginning. Yeah. People will either be like, five days of chapel, I'm out. Name, you know, you believe in the statement of faith, I'm out. And as a result, I'm not saying some people don't somehow get mixed in, but very clearly people are either like, I'm in or I'm not. Yeah, it's very like polar. Yes. Especially a lot of like alumni kids. Like both my parents went here. Yeah. Annie Alexander, her parents ah, went here. Okay. And like usually earlier in the high school phase, you're just like, I'm not going to CW University. Yeah. I was like, for a while as a kid, I wanted to go. It was like Stanford or Miami. I want to go where it's warm yeah. and where it's very far away. And uh, then it's just like, you understand what you really want. Yeah. It's like, I don't, I will really want faith based. Right. Um, like, I'll take those extra four years of training. Yeah. Um, like biblical training and stewardship before I go out into the world. Right. And so I think um, just giving that perspective to kids of like, okay, what is, what do you really want from college? Yeah. Listen, I saw a picture the other day on uh, X, and it had senior in high school picture. Mm -hmm. It says, like, leaving, college, leaving high school. And then it showed four years later the same girl leaving college. And the difference of hopelessness in her eyes. Yeah. Now I'm going to be very stereotypical, but like you could tell based on even the look, like probably, you know, probably she had a massive transition, Yeah, you know, physically and emotionally and spiritually, like, and I'm thinking, wow. And it said something in the, in the things like, be careful where you send your kids to college. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because listen, you are in college, you are the most open to ideas. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah. I mean, if you insert someone in that situation where they are a sponge and you put in there like capitalism is bad, you know, history is jacked, um, you know, uh racism is is we need to reverse racism. Like you put in all these ideologies and they just they don't even think about it. Yeah. You know, they just simply adopt it. And I'm saying, I want my Cedarville students to wrestle with is scripture real? Like, trust me, both ways. I'm saying, like, in some of my classes. Yeah. Well, you saw it the other day with David mm -hmm. and the uh, and fighting Goliath. Yeah. Remember that? I said, What did he ask? And everyone's like, oh, you know, everyone gave the spiritual answers. Yeah. Yeah. And there was nothing wrong with that. They're like, oh, he wanted to protect God's name. He wanted Israel, you know, to be victorious. And I'm like, yeah, but what else did he say? And he's, and the Bible says three times, he says, what do I get? Yeah. What do I get if I kill Goliath? Yeah. What's and they're like, and they're, and they're like, you, your family doesn't have taxes and you get the king's daughter. You know, like we don't read that. Yeah. We kind of like just, you know, spiritualize sometimes everything and say, oh, everybody in the Bible had great motives and it's intense when you really look at the Bible. the And that's why I think the Bible is believable. How real the people are. Yes. Like, like they are yeah. they are messed up. Like honestly, what healed me from self-injury was a certain group of Psalms mm -hmm. called the imprecatory Psalms. And those are the ones that scare theologians because David, this is like Psalm 109, Psalm 69. Yeah. David is saying, May you take my enemies and blot them out of the book of life. Yeah. Which literally means may my enemies go to hell. Like he's literally writing a psalm that says that. Like yeah. when have we ever sung that in church? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I found freedom in that psalm because I'm like, wow, how can David, a man after God's own heart, write those things? Mm -hmm. Either A, something's happening that I can't explain, or B, Maybe God is impressed with us being real. Yeah. And not real as in like, I'm going to be real and like, I don't care about anybody. Yeah, be sinful, yeah. Yeah, but it's real in the sense of like, I'm coming to you, God, 
with all my emotions. Yeah. I'm angry, I'm envious, I'm mad, you know, like whatever, but I'm gonna come to you and because I'm gonna come to you, I will get holy. Yeah, it's understanding like you fully trust him. Yeah. It's like a display of like, okay, I trust you with all these things yes. so you'll be merciful and forgive me. That's what he wants. But also help me. Through. Yeah. Yeah. My old view was, and the reason why I got into cutting and self-injury was I can't go to God mm -hmm. unless I'm perfect. Yeah. Like, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a lie that Satan puts out there. You get, you can't come to God unless you're perfect. Well, you're never going to come to God then. So that's that's like a, a big strategy. It's just let's get people so wrapped up in performance or people do this. Uh, they either go to religion, which is what I went to. I'll make myself better with my own works. Or they go to rebellion. They say, because the standard's so high, psh, I'm going to live it up. Yeah. And that's, the, that's really the prodigal son story. You got the older brother and the younger brother. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool how applicable the biblical stories are to your own life yeah. if you actually think about it. I know in the New Testament, the class I'm taking, mm. um, we're going through the, the Pergamum letters, mm. which is uh, Revelation. Luke, or um, is it? Yeah, it's Luke talking to um, Antipas. Oh, Antipas. Wow. Um, okay. Back in the day. So it was a nobleman in uh, Pergamum. Um, he was a Roman nobleman wow. who was like, a, um, he helped build temples and stuff, okay. build buildings. He had a lot of honor. And then there was Luke who was taking Doctor. care of the yeah. house of Wow. another nobleman okay. and they discussed luke was like hey here's my manuscript the like gospel of luke wow and they talked back and forth and it was the display of like um antipas transition from like fully enveloped in the world and getting honor and being holy interesting to like he actually ended up dying because there's a christian like peasant that was about to be like burned to the stake wow and he went and like vouched for him and then ended up being the one burned at the stake as wow. a full nobleman that's but it's so real okay like how their convert like their conversation yeah is just like two people talking wow and it makes luke feel like a real person instead of Ooh, just that's like cool this, this guy that wrote the yeah. bible so that's cool okay i thought you were going with the the seven churches in revelation but per oh, yeah. pergamum was one was one yeah that's i i've never heard that type of uh, approach that's pretty cool yeah so it was a it's a book we're doing for new testament for uh, dr Kauser. nice um, he's awesome he uh, i think we're his only undergraduate class he does mostly i think mdiv oh stuff. wow cool um so he he's talking about stuff i'm like deep stuff wow yeah <laughs> i guess just like wait that's it's like cool. a lot of brain power for some of the stuff he talks about yeah um so well, I guess before we just kind of close here, yeah. do you have any any advice or anything you'd like to say to students, um, one who may be thinking about joining your classes, joining Cedarville, or just students here yeah. um, in general? I, I would just say that I'm really impressed with the students who take my classes. And I don't care if what major they're from. Yeah. In fact, I feel like, the slogan is, you know, entrepreneurship is a mindset, not a minor. Mm -hmm. I'm secret words here. Um, we may have a major soon. Yeah, I've been hearing about that. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So entrepreneurship may soon be a major. So I'll need to change the quote that says entrepreneurship is not a major. It's a, it's a, mindset. It's a mindset. Yeah. But um, I would just encourage people, like, even if they're a pastor, mm. even if they're a, a a whole a housewife stay-at-home dad like there are in my book the e-mind yeah i come up with 10 traits and those are the 10 traits i use to be successful at um france mm -hmm. riding some crazy high mountains all by myself when my friends had it back out five days before the trip so like you will learn skills and one of those is um independence no one's coming to save you yeah and so that trait, no one's coming to save you, is actually really helpful for the mm. pitch. It's yeah. helpful for your job. It's helpful. It doesn't mean that you're all alone and God's not with you. What yeah. it means is like you can't give blame. Remember how I teach victims lie in bed, blame excuses and denial? Yeah. Victims say the world happens to me. Well, if you are a victim in blame, excuses, and denial, the opposite of that is an entrepreneur. Yeah. Like you can't, Elon Musk cannot 
make blame excuses and denial no. his mantra. If he does, he will not create value yeah. in the world. And so it's interesting. I've had I've had people come up to me here at Cedarville. I won't name names, but they're like, wow, I could never be an entrepreneur. These are these are adults. They're like, you are just wired for risk. You know, I I could just never do that. And in a way, I hear what they're saying. Mm -hmm. But in a way, I'm like, you know what? Life is risk. Yeah. You know, so like nobody's guaranteed that they're going to make it home tonight. No one's guaranteed they're not going to get a call from a doctor today. Like we don't know what today or tomorrow holds. And so Hebrews 11, 6, it is you know, impossible to please God with, without, without faith. It says anyone who, you know, comes to God must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of mm -hmm. those who diligently seek him. So like we have to be wired for risk as yeah. believers. And that's not comfortable with a lot of American church. A lot of American church is like, I don't want risk. Yeah. Yeah. I think in order to reach, I think almost the unreached generation, which is the, or, like oh, younger millennials, yeah. older Gen Zers, um, it's got to be a little bit different of an approach, like the social media aspect of TikTok. Yeah. Like churches are not on there at all, but that's where we all are yeah. on. Um, well, we're talking uh, about that yeah. in the content creation class. Yeah, trying to reach there. We said, should we be, and like the class is divided. Yeah. So we asked the class, look, I said, how much of TikTok are godly things going on? And I honestly didn't know what they would say. Like, would they say 10%? Would they say half? They said, These, this is their view. It's unscientific. But they said over 90% of content they feel is um, not godly. And then I said, okay, if that's true or not true. But I said, so should you be there? Yeah. And then immediately people are like, yes because no one is there yeah. and other people are like, no. And so I think it almost comes down to this, like uh, maybe remember the whole in the scriptures, like the meat sacrifice to idol thing yeah. where Paul's like, look, if you can do it, eat it. If you can't do it, don't. Why should I, my freedom, you know, cause my brother to stumble? Why should I be judged? I almost feel like social media is that issue today. It's yeah. like the meat sacrifice to idol issue where, I'm on social media, but I got to have like filters, you know? So like I choose filters on X where I'm like, you know, don't show sensitive content. Like you have to go in there wise. It's almost yep. like X 17 Mars Hill. It is the public square. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And it's, you have to be careful, but I don't think it's something you should just like shy away from. Yeah. Um, I think that's where our generation of entrepreneurs, maybe that's why God has wired our age group this way is to try to figure that out okay, it's a risky risky it's, realm is, to go it into. is risky you need the holy and, spirit yeah so. but i've been impressed with all you you know i got to give a shout out to you i've been impressed with your social media with your um podcast mm -hmm. right away i think within the first few weeks i'm like can i hire you <laughs> so right away i saw value that you were providing mm -hmm. so the plaster school business I have a budget. I'm like, you know, let's use some for to hire you and a few other people. So yeah. I think you're doing amazing. Um, I mean, you're only a freshman, right? Yeah. Look at this, folks. Freshman and he's crushing it. So I would just encourage you, like, you're not too young. Take a risk, man. Yeah, go for it. I mean, our team was um, one sophomore, two freshmen yep. um, for the plastic school business. Q, there's a lot of uh, younger people helping. Yeah. Uh, myself, Lillian. Um, she's been awesome. She's, yeah. So, she's, um, yeah, I think getting in on it early. It's not like definitely. you just have to sit back freshman year and then figure it out later. Yeah. And if someone's watching, it's like jump into the pitch. Yeah. The pitch happens at least twice a year now. Yeah. And get your idea in there. Yeah. I think the fall is going to be interesting, especially with the new building. If yeah. Oh, man, what I'm we're going to do with excited. that and just figuring it all out, I think it's definitely it's exciting. So. All right. Well, I think it's about time yeah. to wrap up. Um, I want to thank you for coming awesome. on. Uh, thank you for just talking about everything. Yeah. And uh, just everybody down in the description, um, you have links to all of his social media, website, if you want to find out more about him. Love to stay in touch with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. They reach out. And uh, just thank you for watching. If you made it this far, uh, thank you for supporting. 
Let me know in the comments, Cedarville students or Ohio, just students in Ohio, if you have any professors you would like me to pick their ear. Um, and if you don't comment, I won't know. So please do. And thank you guys for watching. See you later. Bye-bye.